Aloha folks, Grumpy Gardener here again. It's been one of those rainy days here in Pune. Uh, I'm soaked to the bone. <laughs> I've been out working all day long in this stuff. Uh, but I decided to take a break and talk about medicine again. Something that uh, gardeners really don't know that much about. <laughs> uh, but we try. Yeah, if uh, those of you who have been watching this show for a while, you know that way back when, uh, last year sometime, we kind of started this program talking about pharmaceutical commercials and just how ridiculous they are, the side effects and so on. And I know I got a lot of great feedback uh, from viewers on that one. There didn't seem to be anybody out there that thinks the pharmaceutical commercials encourage them to want to use the drugs. Uh, not me. Oh boy, here comes the rain. I was watching the network news the other night, and uh, the talking heads went off, and up pops a commercial. Uh, I know lately uh, I, I'm getting an awful lot of pharmaceutical commercials. They seem to be a good 30%, I think, of all the commercials in evening television these days. Uh, I'm also seeing pharmaceuticals for your pet. That's a good one. Hosequin. Uh, yeah, so we got we got pharmaceuticals for Fido and ph pharmaceuticals for Grandpa and you name it. Well, I saw this commercial and I'm not going to mention the manufacturers or the name of the drug. We'll stay away from that. I don't want to get sued anyway. But, boy, I'll tell you. Yeah, the commercial was about uh, one of these uh, nicotine pills. You know, where if you're trying to quit smoking and... Uh, you'll take these pills and they're going to help you go through the process. Now, before I go on to the commercial, uh, I'm going to admit in public that the Green Garden guy himself has had personal experience with nicotine addiction. I was addicted for decades, years back. Came from a family of people where everybody in the extended family in the household smoked. Right from grandma to grandpa to the aunts to the uncles to mom to everybody smoked. Okay. And uh, so, I naturally, it was kind of normal in those days that I grew up doing the same thing. Um, you know, I, I think I had a sinus infection from infancy all the way into my teenage years just from breathing all the smoke that was inside the house. And then, of course, when I started smoking, I probably gave myself my own sinus infection. Um, and I successfully quit numerous times over the years. Um, I guess just being the kind of stubborn, ornery, kind of grumpy gardener guy that I am, I really don't have too much trouble stopping smoking. Um, I mean, you know, I go through the same BS everybody else does. I get the withdrawal, I get the cravings, you know, I really want that cigarette pretty bad, you know, but I'm a pretty stubborn guy, and if I tell myself, you ain't having a cigarette, Buster, I'm not having a cigarette, that's all there is to it. And so I always found it fairly easy. I even used to tempt myself by putting the pack right next to my favorite chair until it got stale, old, and nasty, and nobody wanted that thing anyway. Then I'd throw it out. But uh, I found the withdrawal from nicotine, personally, not to be as fearsome as a lot of people claim it is. But on the other hand, I think nicotine is probably the most addictive substance I have ever encountered in my life. And it was worse years ago because it was so socially acceptable. You know, Hollywood actors did it, the president smoked, everybody smoked, you know. And so it was a normal, socially acceptable type behavior. It's not like becoming a, uh, an alcoholic or a drunk, you know, where you may make a fool out of yourself in public or something or cause an accident. You know, nicotine really never did that. Uh, it was actually considered suave at one point. <laughs> Holding a cigarette, you know. Look at the old movies, if you don't believe me on that one. Humphrey Bogart was hardly ever seen without a weed in his mouth. So, like I say, I, I've been through that process. Uh, I have uh, more than once. The, my problem always was, I always thought I could just have one. And it must have taken me at least three or four bouts of withdrawal and quitting 
uh, before I realized that if I have one cigarette, I bought the entire tobacco farm. I may as well plant the place with tobacco because I can't have one cigarette. You know, if, if I thought I could enjoy a fine Cuban cigar occasionally without problems, I probably would. Probably. And nobody else would get near me <laughs> because of the stink. But uh, you know, I have a lot of peace. But no, I, I can't do it. There's no way. Uh, that was the lesson I had to learn. You know. Quitting for me was easy. Staying, that was the hard one. That's the hard one. Okay. Anyway, so I saw this commercial. And it was one of these blue pills. Now, I guess Viagra is blue, too. But this uh, apparently is a nicotine pill that will help ease your withdrawal. And the, the main character in this ad is a turkey. Now, when I first looked at it, I went, a turkey? I'm supposed to identify with a turkey? Well, what do these people think I am? You know, I mean, you know, you walk up to some guy and go, hey, turkey! What do you mean? It's an insult, right? It means you're dumb, you're clumsy, you know, and maybe you'll get eaten uh, even. But, you know, turkey is not, you know, some of us want to be a jaguar. There's others that would rather be a pit bull. Some even want to be a crocodile, but a turkey? I don't think so. Um, ben Franklin was the last guy who had much good to say about turkeys. He wanted them on the flag, you know, as our American symbol. He wanted the turkey as a symbol of America. But on the other hand, if you look at Ben's belly, I bet he figured we were going to eat the national bird on the 4th of July. So, but, so they got this turkey. I'm looking at the turkey's out camping. Camping turkey. Well, after I saw that same commercial a few times, I said, well, all right, you know, I guess I get the idea. The turkey's got a stocking hat on and a down vest, and he's outside in the woods. He's a cold turkey. Duh, he's got a fire. He's making a fire with a stick. He's rubbing a stick. Yeah, so you get cold turkey. I guess that's the symbolism, right? Well, the first few times around that commercial, the symbolism of cold turkey was a little bit lost on me. All I saw was a drug company referring to his clients as being turkeys. And there's still some question in my mind about that. Anywho, so... They got the turkey there. He's got his old fire going, you know, and he's sitting there and he's thinking about it, thinking about it. Nah, he reaches in, he pulls out a pack of cigarettes, and he throws the cigarettes in the fire. Okay, he's going to quit. Good. So then he reaches in his other pocket, and he pulls out a handful of blue pills. And I mean, that's a handful of blue pills, all right? That's actually in his wing. He's got it in his wing. And... Then he goes ahead and they're telling you, you know, how this is going to help alleviate, you know, your withdrawal, make it so much easier for you and blah, 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 uh, if you use our, our little blue pill. And so the turkey pops one. All right, that's what you're supposed to do. Take a blue pill when you've got a nicotine withdrawal going on. Fine. But then, over the fire, turkey's got a pot of soup, beans or something he's going to eat. It's a pot of soup. Sitting there on the fire. He looks in his wing. There's like five or six of these damn nicotine pills left. He grabs them. He throws them in the soup pot. Now that's weird. Okay. That's really strange. I had to watch the commercial intentionally three times just to make sure that was what that turkey did with the rest of those nicotine pills. And so he stirs them up like this in the pot, you know. And then he reaches in. He picks up a spoon and... To me, it sure as heck looks like a blue pill sitting in the end of the spoon, and he eats it. Now, I'm sure the manufacturers say, oh, no, that was a bean. It's bean soup. You know, it wasn't a nicotine pill. But I saw him. <laughs> okay? The turkey filled the pot of soup with nic nicotine pills. And what kind of message have we got here? I mean, the only thing I could think of those of you who followed my uh, my binge of stories last Halloween, you can go back last October and find this one. It's called uh, Mystic Minestrone. That was what we called it. That's the story about, in a 1960s rock festival, 
how my poor brother didn't know that somebody had thrown 36 doses of mescaline, uh, which is a psychedelic drug, it comes from cactus, from the peyote cactus. They had thrown 36 hits of mescaline into a pot of minestrone, which my brother was hungry and ate the entire pot. And, uh, wow, I mean, it took Brother Bob places that Timothy Leary has never been to. If you're curious about that one, look for Mystic Minestrone on my channel. It's the story of Bob eating all that mescaline. Uh, and that's what it reminded me of. And obviously, you know, it was a completely illegal thing at a 60s rock festival, right? You know, the sort of things that people talk about if they remembered the 60s, which they really weren't there if they remember them anyway, they're lying. But, you know, there's kind of stories that come up from there. But this is a pharmaceutical company. They're referring to their client as being a turkey to begin with. That's rather insolent. But then the turkey is throwing piles of the pills into the pot, and he's eating them. In front of the, you know, in front of the television set, right in front of the children and everybody else. This is, what are they trying to say? I mean, did did some artist who was doing the animation, uh, you know, have a crutch and he worked this in where nobody quite noticed it, uh, or was there an intentional subliminal message in the turkey chugging this stuff like it was candy? I'm not sure. But what it did do to me is that, aside from side effects on the commercials, you know, <laughs> dogs may chase you everywhere, will increase the size of your buttocks, you know, if, uh, consult your doctor if blood continues to hemorrhage from your eyeballs for over four hours, you know, if it isn't just the side effects, uh, now they're actually putting messages in these things that are, you know, from my point of view, uh, drug dealers are drug dealers. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the guy on the corner in New York who's selling heroin to the junkies or whether it's, uh, you know, J&J &J pushing uh, Oxycontin uh, so that people are becoming massively addicted. Um, you know, the drug companies are claiming, you know, well, no, we really didn't push drugs on those people to cause addiction for our profits, you know. But the turkey who took a handful of them things. Now, uh, the only place I've ever been, kind of people I've ever been around that would do something like that are heavy drug users. Yeah, not your regular Joe. Uh, you know, maybe some of us might double up a pill once in a while if the first one doesn't work, but i throw a whole handful in a pot of soup, i tell you that. Yeah, so there you have it, folks. Pharmaceutical commercials. Turkey's overdosing on nicotine and addiction. Um, thanks for watching the Grumpy Gardener Show. Aloha. Uh, now that the rain stops, I can go back to work.